if you have anything, if you've done anything, either of you have done anything on the internet in the, you know, over the past, what was it, last week, week before last, you probably hit the slowdown, right? Uh, so there was a, what was it, last Friday? I think it was last Two Friday. Fridays. Two Fridays ago, yeah. So sites like Netflix, Twitter, Spotify, Wired, Hulu, all these guys basically either slowed down or went completely offline because there was this massive DNS attack. Uh, attack. They called it a botnet attack. And essentially what happened was some hackers, we don't know who they are, or maybe some people know who they are, but we don't know who they are, took over several, allegedly several webcams, kind of like the ones that we are doing this show on right now, to use them to direct uh, a, a gazillion requests to these sites thereby bringing them down to their knees that's what a that's what a denial of service attack is you can only it's like a fire hose like trying to drink from a fire hose your your mouth can only take so much and then you kind of die or shut down right so that's that's what they did they turned everybody into a fire hose at these sites and and brought them to their knees so the the story is people were saying that oh this is you know people the the hackers took control of of baby monitors and webcams and security cameras and all this stuff when and actually, what happened was something slightly different. Craig, did you read? Did you read the story? I did. Yeah. So it. So tell us what happened. It was. Uh, it it was security cameras, uh, not uh, cameras that consumers use, but the ones that businesses would tend to use. And it was the older models. A lot of them had. Uh, uh, either a modem connection to the internet, um, right? So a modem, like, yeah, two thousand four. Well, <laughs> so in these security things, the they, you don't need a lot of throughput for them. You you know it it, uh, and and they just work, right? You just plug mm -hmm. it in, and right. I had one in my business for eleven years that I got at the beginning and never never upgraded it because it just took security camera footage, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, uh, but. The, the security, you know, someone found a, a vulnerability in the software and was able to download software into them that could cause this botnet attack. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Martin, Martin, what do you, what do you think about this? Was, did you, were you affected at all by this attack? Um, I, I think I noticed a few sites that I, that I regularly visit that were slow, but I, it wasn't something that really affected us over here. Mm. Um, I think I'm, I was, sent an email by a few of the services that I use saying that, you know, that we've been affected, but it's all okay now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I think that the fun thing about this, not the fun thing, that's <laughs> kind of a, a uh, ironically fun thing about this is that, um, you know, the article that, that you, you've linked to goes on to talk about um, things like light bulbs being uh, you know, th that are, everything's connected now. And right. they mention a, a toothbrush that's connected. My tooth, my electric toothbrush has Bluetooth and, and records how many minutes I, <laughs> I record. I, <laughs> you know, I, I uh, brush my teeth each day. It, it says, okay, you brush your teeth. You haven't brushed your teeth yet. And I'll oh, shut up. You know, so. You, but really? Oh, yeah. yeah honestly, it's, it, I've got Bluetooth in my, in my toothbrush. So it, <laughs> it knows, it knows how. I mean, it's David Dusherman, when we were on a couple of years ago we were on my uh, Hokkaido landscape tour together and he sat behind me and he and he said show me some of your photos on your phone so I've, I've got the open the, the phone up gave him Lightroom mobile and then when he closed it he started looking at the other apps on my phone and he says what's this you've got the, a, a brown brawn brown you know yeah. the toothbrush yeah. and, uh -huh. and, he, and he said what's this and he opened it up and it said it said Martin's pushing too hard and, <laughs> and he, so he's like roll, he's rolling around and it's basically if you, if you put, apply too much pressure when you brush your teeth it Warns you, so yeah. You know, but so, so the the oh, point was. Geez. Oh, Martin, that's taking it too the, far, man. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> I heard someone talking about a toilet paper roll dispenser that would notify Amazon when it ran low. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so these things. I mean, a lot of the time, it's just gimmicks to get us to buy stuff. It worked for me. I mean, I, I'd got the one toothbrush that was like I don't know two hundred dollars for a really nice electric toothbrush. The one with Bluetooth was almost three hundred dollars. They got an extra hundred dollars out of me for Bluetooth, and I. So th that's what's happening. People are putting they're connecting stuff. The Internet of Things, they call it, right? The Internet exactly. of Things. Exactly. Yeah. So at the very end of this article, the fun thing was a a um, a quote by 
um, I think it's Wick, Wickholm, it says. It says, people shouldn't be afraid of their light bulb, says Wickholm, yet. But yeah. you, should be aware, you should be aware that if it has an internet connection, that light bulb could be turned against you. Skynet. And, and Skynet is not, coming, man. I mean, everything is online. Everything's connected in this internet of things. And so you do have to be, I think you have to ask yourself, do you really need everything online? Um, yeah. I think you mentioned last month when I was on Twitter, Frederick, about the, the some, uh, was it a door, a door camera? Um, oh, yeah, the, the ring, the, by, the ring, by, yeah. Yeah, by default, it, it's, it's streaming constantly. Mm -hmm. We don't need that. And, and the more manufacturers that try to use that sort of thing um, and without really thinking of the consequences, just hook everything up onto the Internet, it, it should be, we should be more intelligent, or not we, but the manufacturers of these products should be more intelligent. And if you're going to connect something up, how do you connect it and how much data do you really need to send across the Internet? Yeah, I don't know. I, I would like a, I would like a, a smart toilet that would that would analyze my deposit wait, 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 and tell going? me how to adjust my diet. I was about to say, don't go there. Don't go there. Say, Frederick, uh, you need more fiber. Yeah, nice. It's well, coming. It's coming. Yeah. I'm telling you. These startups, I, I you know, started my career working in these startups in the Silicon Valley here, and typically the, the person that was in charge of security, you know, uh, was the junior or, you know, new engineer. It mm. was not one of the, right? It was kind of an afterthought. Oh, yeah, we should probably look at security. We'll put, you know, mm. Bob on it. He just started. And, mm. uh, it, you know, a lot of companies, especially these startups where you don't have a lot of, you know, people mm -hmm. and everybody's wearing multiple hats, you know, he just goes and finds something online that, you know, some service and says, all right, this, will, this is how we're going to do our security without knowing the ramifications of it. So mm. it's, it's I, I think it's just uh, going to continue to be an issue. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you can you can stop it, right? And there, there's multiple tangents happening, right? Because there's there's all these discussions about AI and how at a certain point it's going to become sentient and and realize that that humans are an infestation in the problem and, and tell us that hey, the planet is more important than these things living on it and <laughs> try to get, get rid of mm -hmm. us so we won't harm the planet. Yeah, you know, there's all kinds of things happening that are that are scary. Mm. But it's all good. But, you know, you think about this stuff. I, I was thinking about it when, when they said that these these seemingly innocuous devices were commandeered to do something nefarious. I was thinking, you know, we're heading down this path of self-driving vehicles oh, and yeah. trucking and all that. What happens when that network is breached <laughs> and, and hackers decide, you know, I want to cause gridlock? In Los Angeles, well, that's that's already yeah. Los Angeles, but I would call it gridlock in some other city or do something, you know? Right, they, just crash all the cars, yeah. Crash all the cars, right. you yeah. know, yeah. or or do something, you know, whatever. It's well, yeah. even even now they they say that there's there are ways some of the cars that are online to get updates and things. There, there are ways to take over them and call, and like disable the brake system uh, oh, and things like I, that. I, I, I saw, saw that movie. A, yeah, I, well, I saw a, a news report on that just a couple of weeks ago, mm, where yeah. the guy sitting, they, they get a hacker sitting in the car, and he's saying, "All right, right, I'm going to make the car go reverse. I'm going to make yeah. the car stop now." Right. Yeah. Oh. So uh, these things are already possible because we're sticking everything online, and we need to be we need to get better at the security and. Um, and the one thing that we should probably say, to, just for the listeners, in that um, if they don't go and check out the uh, the full article, that at the moment this article is saying that we're not too concerned about devices on a on a network at home because a lot of the time only your router is or router is um, has actually got an IP address that's publicly visible. Um, it's really not that easy to to get devices that are inside your home. Um, to get to them from outside, from the router. So yeah. it's not something that you need to worry about immediately, thinking that everything's going to go crazy. But I think we all need to be um, to be a little bit, uh, you know, concerned about cautiously the, the possibility. Yeah, the possibility yeah. of uh, it's like that thing they were talking about in the article as well, where some uh, some people from halfway around the world were talking to kids on their on the baby cam thing. Mm -hmm. um, this is you know you have to be careful about what you put on the internet. Yeah. Um, do you, do, Martin? Do you on, ever? Do you ever? Do you feel like that you could cut the cord? Do you feel like you could say take your family and move to, 
you know, a, a log cabin in the woods and, and fish in the creek for your for your dinner and, and raise crops and light a fire at night and read. You ever feel like <laughs> you ever feel like I, that you could do that? I could do that for about, I don't know, a week. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. But I mean, for, like many people, my my entire business depends on being online. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I create content. That's part of one of the, one of my main marketing vehicles. If I can't get to the internet, then basically my business collapses, and I I don't get to do the uh, the Tim Ferriss five hour week or anything. Mm-hmm. I you know it's just I I have to be online. Um, I find it relaxing sometimes when I like in, when I was in Greenland recently. It was one of those systems where you have to pay like forty-five dollars for an hour of internet, and you have to log off when you're finished. Um, yeah. So I, I actually found it quite refreshing to to not be connected the whole time. It might but, be a resort. That'd be like a nice resort, right? Yeah. The, yeah. De- the detox, the tech geek detox resort. Right. <laughs> it's the same for Namibia. I mean, I'll be in Namibia again in June next year, and one of the things that I say in the guidebook is. We don't have internet. There are some places where, where the internet is either so slow or non-existent that you're going to be offline for a couple of days. Yeah. Let's enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. it actually does feel good to not have access to Instagram or things like this. Just you know, just just to, in blocks of time. But it takes I think about that, a day of withdrawals, I, you know, because you're just you're you're, you're yeah. going through withdrawal symptoms, and then it's mm. like, oh, this is kind of nice. Yeah. Right? Well, these it's Utah just, trips that I go on are the same way. You know, I, um, I, the longest I've had no internet access is a week on Lake Powell, a houseboat on Lake Powell. Mm-hmm. Um, and after a few days, I, you know, the first few days I'm going, I need to, <laughs> I need to check my email. I need to, right? Mm-hmm. But after a while, it was, it was, it was refreshing. It was nice, mm-hmm. and I didn't, it, I could then just concentrate on my photography and yeah. just, right? Yeah. I think what helps is you come out the other side and the world hasn't ended and you're yeah. not in financial ruin even though you weren't in you weren't yeah. in contact and responding within 30 milliseconds to every email that yeah. came into you. you, you well, know, it's, self- it, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, it it does um it does feel weird coming back and getting that internet though. Mm-hmm. I do feel like I missed a chunk of life mm-hmm. that happened while I was gone. Um mm-hmm. and I sometimes there are people that are right mad at me because they couldn't get in touch with me mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true i have to true. deal with them so. but craig, what, what craig do you think you could live like i i i, I posited to to uh, martin there you think you could live by the <laughs> by the streak and by the creek in a log cabin and and hang out and fish and eat fresh salmon and bake your own bread i, well, I could certainly <laughs> do it but i wouldn't enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> Well, we may be we may be heading in that direction, my friend. 